Dive, 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 guys. Yes, those words that we haven't heard for weeks that we're all waiting to hear again, that the pool is open, that we can get out there and dive, that we can blow some bubbles, that we can leave all of the surface behind. But we can't yet. So we're here for your scuba snacks. Yes, brought to you free. Free, yes, because our scuba snacks are for free for all of our loyal Facebook fans. Yes, we don't try to hawk our wares out there. No, we want to offer and share our stories with everyone for free, folks. It's more funner that way. So today we've got a special panel where today we're actually going to be talking about some more dive stories, of course, but we're also going to be talking about going pro that that's not just that wonderful little digital camera that's actually going professional folks so today we've got our lovable huggable from at least 50 feet away david <laughs> hey everybody good to see you guys again even though i can't see you there you go and we've got our two lovely ladies first of all our lady of the curls erica uh yes erica <laughs> it's hard to tell them apart they are wearing the same shirt and sienna <laughs> <laughs> so what we're going to do folks is we're going to talk about that time that you thought to yourself you know i want to go pro i want to become a professional scuba diver and why many many years ago all of you guys that are scuba divers maybe it was just a couple weeks ago maybe it was two three years ago you had this notion you had this idea that you wanted to lift up the ocean curtain and see what's underneath it you wanted to peek underwater and see what is what what's that all about there's got to be something more than that flat surface so you had to go find an instructor right you had to find somebody maybe a dive shop maybe a friend maybe family but you had to find somebody that could help you get underwater and show you some tricks and show you some tips then that was literally a person giving you your dream and letting it come true so what we want to talk to is is our David and Erica and Sienna. What brought them to want to do the same thing? And how maybe can we help you guys do the same thing? So uh, let's see. David, why don't we start with you? What, what brought you down here to Rainbow Reef? What brought you to the underwater world that, that, that you wanted to share or why? So I have been a scuba diver for many, many, many years, uh, and my uh, rating was always advanced open water diver. And I've uh, been fortunate to dive in many, many different places, uh, and it's been really a wonderful hobby. But at the back of my mind, in front of my mind, throughout all of my diving, I've always thought it would be awesome to be a dive industry professional but I always thought it wasn't practical. And then finally I thought, why should I think of the reasons it's not practical and think of the reasons why I wanna do it? Uh, so the first thing I did was, I didn't do that he this year actually, but I uh, was on vacation in Bonaire and I took my rescue class. And I was a little bit nervous about that because I wasn't sure like, instead of diving for me, it's like looking out for other people and it's a pretty, uh, intensive course and I was kind of unsure whether I was going to really be able to do it. But I, and I've told you guys this before, uh, when we've talked about rescue, uh, I was very, very proud of myself when I finished and uh, just, uh, I, I loved it. And then I knew I definitely wanted to continue on. And then I came down here to Rainbow Reef Dive Center, the best patty uh, five-star CDC, uh, probably anywhere. Uh, and did my dive master and other professional stuff here last summer. And uh, now I'm very fortunate and happy to be working for Rainbow Reef as well. Excellent. So it, it's kind of like a dream come true or a, a, a small kernel of an idea, so to speak, come true. Um, guys, think about this while, while you're out there. And, and those of you that have already been signing in, we've got some people. Done, we've got our Cajuns in the house. Great to see you, Jackie. So wonderful. Hope to get you down here again soon. Love that that Creole, man. Uh, we've got some people from, uh, looks like we've got some people down from the Caribbean. We've got some people calling all over the place. Looks like we've even got some, oh, we've got Michigan out there. We've got uh, Alaska. Alaska and Hawaii. So that's that's what I'm talking about. We're here just to share our stories, share some scuba snacks. Uh, feed us. Let us and and we'll we'll give them back. But let us know where you are. Let us know what your what your thoughts are. When would you like to go diving next? Where would you like to go diving next? And can we help you do that? 
So today again, folks, we're talking about going pro and what it was that made us decide to take that giant stride into our next career. Uh, a career for many people that is a second career, something that we think, you know what, I'd always love to do this one day, but I never thought it was was valid, which is exactly what David was talking about, uh, just getting out there and doing it. So let's go to some of our more newer. Uh, as a matter of fact, let's go to Erica because Eric is our, our newest intern invite. Erica, tell us a little bit about something about how you got here and why. Well, it looks like we're having a little bit of a technical difficulty because David is trying to fit into the same colored T-shirt that Erica is wearing so he can do his best impersonation of, of Erica. Uh, perhaps we can get to Sienna. Oh, there's Erica. Or back to Erica. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have a thing. Yeah. <laughs> um. On the coast of North Carolina, so I grew up around salt water. I absolutely love the ocean. I've been fascinated with it since I remember. Um, and I'm a fairly new diver. I got certified two years ago and absolutely fell in love with it because it was part of the ocean I'd never seen before. And I hadn't dived too much, but I'm very adventurous. And then I ran into someone who told me about this internship at Rainbow Reef. And I was just like, why can't I couple something that I absolutely love doing with a career that's very rewarding? Um, yeah. <laughs> but like I said, I'm there you go. Wow, Eric, excellent. Um, Erica, tell us what what was one of the things or what was an aspect of one of going underwater that you really wanted to do? What was what was that reason that, that drove you to get underwater? Um so where i live we have a ton of shipwrecks the graveyard of the atlantic and they so where i live it's very historical um they incorporate all kinds of i don't know history throughout the town i mean so Blackbeard was a big thing I grew up with. They found the Queen Anne's Revenge in 98, which is the year I was born, and they've been taking things off the ship since then. So I've grown up seeing things come off the ship. And so that's really what got me into diving because I wanted to go see these wrecks um, instead of just hear about them. So, but when I got down wow. there, I saw... <laughs> Yeah, no, no, no. That's fantastic. That's that's that would totally make me want to go scuba diving. Absolutely, especially going pro. I mean, can you imagine? Can you imagine? Not only would you have some of that history behind you, but you're from that town that's got the history that you can now bring and share with your students and everything. That's that's really cool. Um, um, Sienna, how about yourself? So I started diving about ten years ago, and it wasn't until maybe two or three years ago on a dive that I did in the Bahamas that made me really, really want to get into scuba diving. But um, at that point, I was still in school. I was finishing up my master's degree. So I wanted to wait until I finished that and then look at what steps I can take to kind of start a career in diving. And then that's when I found Rainbow Reef and I became an intern and I've made it all the way through and now I'm an instructor. So I'm starting my professional career down here. Ah, excellent. So, so you actually been diving for a while and then you, you went the whole route now. So Sienna, where do you actually hail from? I am from Maryland, I mean, central Northern Maryland. Ah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Not much. Oh, so you're not on the coast. No, I'm like three hours from the coast. Oh, uh, okay. Well, there's still, there's still the love of the sea. Obviously there's still the love of the sea. So, um, my little friend, um, uh, a friend of mine once asked me, when you're when you're going pro, when you're actually getting gear, what kind of gear do you want to get? What might be something that you would get first as a scuba instructor that you wouldn't necessarily think about as just a diver? Or what is a really important tool, perhaps, to you? Uh, let's go to you, David. What's what's one of the, the important tools for yourself as a scuba instructor? 
So when you uh, first go through the training as a dive master and instructor, you learn a whole bunch of new PADI standards, uh, including gear, additional gear that uh, professionals must carry that other people can but don't have to. And uh, the one thing that I've never owned until I became uh, a professional is a dive knife. And we are always supposed to have a dive knife on us anytime we're in the water with students. Uh, or, or guiding people. So that is, uh, that is something that uh, I got as soon as uh, I went into training. Oh, okay. And as a matter of fact, it is one of those tools that we are recommended or required to have as a scuba diver is to have a cutting device, but there's a difference between an actual dive knife, right? And you see maybe a line cutter here, and you've got the serrated edge for some really hard things. And uh, you've got the blunt tip, right? For prying stuff. Uh, or you've got one of my favorite things because you can put it all over your body. Um, you've got the uh, line cutter, right? And this was a really cool one because it still has a sharp edge uh, and it's got a line cutter. Um, what what kinds of things do you uh, either, let's say, let, Sienna, what do you have or what did you get as a scuba instructor that you may not have needed or thought you needed as a diver? Um, I'd have to say definitely my computer. Before coming into this, I didn't really know anything about dive computers, but um, throughout my training and becoming a professional, that's something that I've really benefited from having. So definitely a dive computer. Okay. We're back to David. Oh, we know we're back. Something that I've actually found is something called wet notes. And wet notes are really cool because you can take notes underwater because, well, the paper is meant to get wet, hence the name. Don't know who came up with it. was a really good name, wet notes. Um, but they can actually go in your pocket. They can go in the pocket in the BC. They can go in the pocket if you've got those really cool instructor pants that we call them um, that have pockets on the side. They can go in there so you can keep notes on things and keep track of ideas, um, even map things out like you would in the Dive Master course. Uh, Erica, what what have you found that you needed as a pro? Like I said, I'm fairly new, and actually, I was in the store buying gear yesterday. Um, and actually, Sienna has been helping me pick out my gear um, as a pro. So yesterday, like David said, I got a dive knife, and I've gotten a computer. But, um. I have an extra compass, just extra things. <laughs> um, but I'm still learning, so. Excellent. Excellent. Well, one of the things that they teach, obviously, in the Dive Master course is that you have to have two surface signaling devices. So one of them would be that that SMB or the DSMB that we were talking about in one of our previous, previous um uh, episodes. Another would be just something as easy as a whistle. You know, uh, is the, you can't just put your lips together and whistle when you're in the water because it's kind of hard. Uh, and, and as soon as somebody says, hey, you forget to whistle. Um, but something uh, that we also learn in the dive master is that we need to be prepared, which means that sometimes those wet notes those, those are the things that we can actually keep to keep track of things. The other thing is, what? Oh, oh, Linky is trying to remind me that we need to remember that things that we can link to are the pro courses. For instance, from the rescue course, where we have to do a map and we have to do an emergency plan. And the rescue course, the emergency plan, we can use that in our dive master course. Thanks, Linky. <laughs> David, what was something that you learned in the dive master course that you may not have thought about as as a regular diver? Um, I actually didn't realize uh, that how much dive masters can do. I always thought of dive master as someone who's essentially guiding divers and keeping them safe. And that's certainly part of the dive master course. And uh, there's a lot of uh, workshopping around that in the water. Uh, but dive masters are also able to assist instructors. Uh, so, you know, you might, somebody might be having trouble uh, mastering a skill, for example, maybe clearing their mask. Uh, and 
a dive master is allowed to take them aside and help them learn to clear their mask. And once they're finally comfortable with it, the instructor can evaluate it to make sure that they've mastered the skill. So I thought that was really cool and interesting. Uh, I guess I should talk more. Um, <clears throat> The, the other thing, uh, until somebody else comes back, is uh, there's an instructor guide that has all of the PADI standards that uh, any dive professional has to follow, and I didn't know that existed, and it's actually very cool, and uh, there's a lot to it that you learn about how much thought is behind all of the different courses, and also uh, just how much thought is behind, like, how to make sure that we're always using conservative judgment to keep people safe. Excellent. And that's very true. And sorry for that brief little uh, uh, departure. Um, we are, uh, since the store is closed, there were actually people that are knocking on the door trying to get in and buy some gear. So I literally just had to run outside and really quickly say, by the way, guys, we are open, but we're open online on divegeardepot.com. And if you pronounce it right, it's divegeardepot.com. So yes, the store is still open. You can still get your dive gear. We can still talk diving, but unfortunately, the people outside that are saying, are you open? we're not. I'm sorry. Um, tell me something, Sienna, when you purchased your dive gear as a, as a pro, what did who did you go to for advice? What kind of gear did you purchase? Did you just purchase anything that you saw online because it seemed to be the most expensive online? What did you do? I, um, I spoke with my instructors, I asked what they recommended. And then when I went to the store, I spoke with the sales staff to kind of ask what they recommend, what they think would be best for a professional, because as a incoming professional, I obviously don't know everything. So I want to find out from the people who know what they're talking about, what would really be the ideal equipment for me to have. Ah, okay. So you would you would recommend going to another dive pro, for instance, uh, that has maybe been doing it for a little while longer, and or the dive center itself for some advice. As a matter of fact, on divegeardepot.com, we actually have a chat area where we can give you advice as well or help you find the kind of gear that's going to be best for you. Because really, not all gear is meant for everybody. There are certain gears that work better for other people. Um, and there's a lot out there. We've got a lot of really, really um, knowledgeable people here at the store, on the phones. We're willing and happy to help with whatever we can do to help you take that giant stride back into the ocean and maybe into your own dive career. Uh, who knows? Like I said, and the other ones, we've been doing some Zoom training with our own IDC and Dive Master candidates, uh, which is really, really excellent because it keeps people engaged and we can still talk diving. We can, we can share our scuba snacks, but we can still learn how to teach because that's what it's really all about, right? Rainbow Reef is the, the way the world learns to teach diving now. Um, so David, I'm going to go first with you this time because you're the one that usually has some kind of a, an interesting site, but instead of an interesting site, I'd like to have an interesting teaching moment that you've had that may have brought some kind of an epiphany, which is such a big word for a wow to you. Yeah, actually the story I was telling about, uh, clearing the mask that, uh, or that the example that I gave is actually a real story. Um, and I had finished my uh, IDC here and I was doing a resort operations course. So basically I was able to shadow instructors who were teaching and work on the boats and that sort of thing. And uh, the instructor had four students, one of whom was really, really freaking out uh, anytime. She could do the partial clear, but taking the mask off and putting it on and clearing it just like completely freaked her out. So I was able to spend, you know, sort of 10, 20 minutes with her aside and just sort of having her watch me do it over and over again and see that it's sort of not that bad and sort of her building up to it. And by the time we sort of finished that, she had it down and it was really easy for her. And, you know, it's just, I guess, like in any teaching situation, uh, patience is really important. And uh, also, uh, just making sure that you're a calming influence on on your students. So it was it was great that I was able to help her through that. 
Absolutely. Uh, the, the patience, you know, the amazing thing is that when you're underwater, patience actually comes very naturally because it's already such a wonderfully soothing place. But you know that what you're trying to do is help somebody actually realize their dream and and have that come true. And so being able to offer that to people, uh, like a dream that I hope that Mr. Ben Miller, you get to get back in the water and go diving with us all as well, because we miss diving too. Uh, but yes, we miss we miss being able to share it with people. We miss being able to train people. We we want your help. Uh, please go ahead and and uh, share with us some of your your moments, uh, guys that are out there and gals that are out there. Um, even if it was you know, especially if it was a training moment, maybe something that a a Patty Pro helped you through something. Uh, maybe it was a fellow colleague. Uh, maybe it was the Cajun clan that they've just they just know their way around here down so much down here so much. Um, Sienna, what would have been a moment maybe in your own training or something that you've seen that, that while you've been training that kind of sticks out in your in your mind is something that you'd like to share? Um, I guess the main thing both in my training and in training other individuals is perfecting buoyancy. That's something that has always really stood out to me and that's something I enjoy doing. And it's definitely really cool when you're teaching someone and you can help them get that perfect weight and perfect weight distribution in order to help them have that really good buoyancy and it just makes them a better diver all around so that's really cool that's what i like to do in my PC. absolutely and there's there's no telling the amount of times that we've talked about the peak performance buoyancy and the the need and the desire to be as neutral and as as streamlined as possible in the water as a matter of fact that's going to be one of the things that we're going to be talking about this saturday and upcoming Wednesday when we do the Project Aware specialty. Uh, again, if you'd like to be part of that Project Aware specialty, it is a dry specialty. We're going to be bringing it right to you in your very own home. As a matter of fact, I will even pour the wine that you drink if you'd like. Um, uh, we'll find a way. Uh, but come join us. If you'd like to do that, go ahead and send us a, a private chat or a little message, and then we'll get you in on that link so that you can join us for that Project Aware. Um, so, uh, Erica, can you tell us something? And we know that you, that you haven't been uh, diving quite as long as other people have, but there's got to be something that has happened while you've been training, while you've been doing the courses, or even watching some of the courses that might stick out that you might like to share with us. Absolutely. So sort of feeding off of Tiana, um, the buoyancy, protecting buoyancy um, in my own training has really helped a lot. And it's crazy how you can learn something from everyone. It's not just the one instructor you're with. Actually, um, I was talking with another intern and he just explained something so perfectly. And it was, I've just, I haven't mastered it yet, but I've definitely been making progress with it, so. Well, that's excellent. That's excellent. And that's another one of those things that the more you do something, the more you can share, the more you can share, the more you can learn. It's, it's, it's very cyclical. Uh, and at the same time, it's, it's wonderful how it's, it's, it's like the ocean. We give to the ocean, the ocean gives to us. We do the same thing. The more people that want to do the same thing, the more we can learn from each other and share. And, you know, munch out on those scuba snacks and just have the best time that we can. We know that we can't maybe get in the water right now, but boy, can we talk about it. Boy, can we think about it and dream about it. Let us know. Send us some pictures that you've taken down here. We'd love to share those with other people. Uh, send us some of your thoughts. Where where would you like to go diving next? Um, as a matter of fact, we're at my favorite part of the the of the, the session where we get to ask where somebody's favorite dive site is. So today I'm going to start off and I'm simply going to talk about Winch Hole because that is just a cool place, whether it's the daytime or the nighttime, because there's so many critters. You can actually tour around and feel like you've been in three, four, five different dive sites at the same time. And it's really not. There's something new every single time I go to the Winch Hole. So that's going to be my, my thumbs up, not to, ascend or anything but my my yeah cool for the day um how about um erica why don't you share something with us my favorite dive site here as of now i haven't done any of the deep dives would be molasses reef um there's just so much life there 
it's um, pretty cool. I saw a few leaf sharks and okay uh we've got uh city of washington that captain jim talked about the city of washington the last time yeah city of washington is a great one thank you so much for sharing that with us keep sharing those things with us we want to hear them because you know we're we're dying as a matter of fact you could probably see how anxious i am to take people back out and go diving again um and yes may yes um also so uh how about you sienna what's uh what's going to be your favorite dive site for us today I'd say that my favorite is the bib, which is one of our deep wrecks. Um, it's a really cool wreck to go on because it is on its side rather than standing straight up like most of our other wrecks. But it's also unique because with the conditions that are common on that wreck, we don't get to dive it very often. So I've been very fortunate to dive it. Um, it's just a beautiful wreck to look at. And if you're lucky, you might see some sharks down there. Um, lots of times eels, maybe some rays. So it's a really cool dive to see. Yes, it is. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, and yes, Jackie, the Benwood, that's a wonderful wreck as well. You can get down in the nooks and the crannies, see some of those beautiful angelfish. Uh, it's a wonderful, wonder, and the damselfish. Uh, it's great. And I've been known to be a wreck myself because I can like lay on my side, but I wouldn't say that for the beauty of diving or anything like that. But so uh, how about David? I know that this is one of those moments that I'm sure you've been biting your nails all the, this entire half hour. What are you going to come up with? So hit us with some. Uh, there it goes. There it goes. Um, so uh, I wish I had uh, gone first this time because I was planning to talk about the bib today. Uh, <laughs> so uh, but uh, Sayana beat me to it, but I'll add, uh, which she, everything she said is exactly right, especially the fact that we can't go on it very much. Uh, it's very cool if you've been on the Duane because it's the sister ship, but the Duane is up like this and the bib is that way. But one of the last time I was on the bib, which was just sort of extraordinary, is uh, if you look all the way out away from the boat as the mast is going way, way, way off there, uh, there were just these three massive, massive Goliath groupers just hanging out over there. Um, apparently it's a cleaning station. I didn't swim out there. I was with a bunch of divers and we were staying on the wreck, but sometime uh, I definitely want to make my way out there and see if I could see what's going on there. But it was uh, just seeing those big rubbers there was extraordinary. Yeah, those are those are pretty amazingly humongous animals. It's it's really cool to see them. Um, and yes, as a matter of fact, Hugh, when you bring Dive Bar back out here, we'd love to go diving and take you guys diving. So we will for sure take you again uh, and get you in into the molasses, Spiegel, you name it. As soon as that water is open, the water is open and we're going to hear those three lovable, wonderful words. Dive, dive, dive. Until that time, folks, thank you so very much for joining us. We really appreciate sharing our scoop of snacks with you. Um, today was a little bit more about the pro side. Uh, maybe next time we're going to get into uh, COVID haircuts. What do we do in this time? How do we get a haircut, folks? And should we really? Should we wait until we go scuba diving? These are the types of things that we need to know. Let us know what you think. What would you do with this hair if you had it right now? What would you do with David's hair, right? <laughs> These are the things that keep us up if we can't go scuba diving, folks. Very, very so thank, thank you all for joining us. We've we've loved sharing our scuba snacks with you. Join us again. And don't forget uh, Linky, who's going to have some more ideas and more thoughts on how to link some of those courses. So from now, big okay from all of us here. Thank you for joining. Bye, everybody. Bye.